Yes, Jen. I can see Jen saying that she's going to watch uh, Broadchurch on Catch Up. Everybody must watch Broadchurch on Catch Up, including myself. <laughs> um, like I say, we, we've got to get those uh, viewing figures uh, up there. So um, thank you for joining me. It's Monday night. For those who might be joining us for the first time or you're seeing this on Twitter and you're like, who's this guy? What is going on? My name's Ross. I'm an actor from Manchester in the UK. I run a website called Act On This, the TV Actors Network. Most of the people you can see me, well, hear me talking to, see me talking to, are, um, are members of that site. They're actors who have got a higher vision for their life and their career and they want to get further faster so we all get together we've got a great community I produce some awesome features and content interviewing actors casting directors agents just industry people and we all share in the knowledge that they uh, they give us tonight is no different we do something on a Monday night called Motivation and Mind Hacks and that's what it is this is going to help you stay motivated in your career you know and uh, ultimately achieve the success that you're after and on a Wednesday night we do something called Book Club as well we look at one book a month so we do one for four weeks it's normally a personal development book or a book on something like I say that's going to hack your motivation hack your productivity um, just really make you a better person we're just all about building a better you Julie always talks to supporting artists on set especially Corey says Patrick Julie Hesmanhau seriously is like there's a few people I've met in the acting industry in, in TV who are like so incredible in terms of their heart not necessarily you know it's not all about the, the talent Julie's incredibly talented she's an amazing actress but she just brings so much more than that to the table she's one of like the greatest forces for good I have ever met um, she throws amazing parties at her house because a garden is the size of 10 football pitches um, and uh, she's always doing charity work giving back creating she's just like this this ball of creativity and just never stops I don't know how the woman like gets everything done that she does she's going to be joining me on actonthis.tv for a full on video interview soon one of the live uh, like multi camera video shoots that I do from Media City UK so make sure you keep an eye out on the site for that but for tonight I thought, you know what? She's going to be on Broadchurch right now as we speak. The first 15 minutes, she says, are crucial. So make sure that, you know, we well, can keep one eye on it now. But when you are watching it on Catch Up, you take a lot of note of the first 15 minutes. That's going to basically give you what you need for the whole eight episodes, okay? Um, and I thought, you know what? Who better to talk to about staying in this industry, staying creative when maybe you're not feeling that you're getting very far? You know, last week we had Rob James Collier from Downton Abbey and I spoke to him about times when you want to give up. I speak to Julie about this today, but also we end up talking really about staying creative because that is the key, I think, to a lot of people's fulfillment. When you're not working as an actor, as long as you're being creative in some capacity whether that is writing it might be acting your own stuff you know singing playing an instrument it's so so crucial julie coins it in this interview for this little chat that we have as filling the well and i talk about that quite a lot i'm like you know what if your well isn't full you have nothing to give to anybody else so it's crucial you are filling your well up give me some hearts if you filled your well today what have you done to fill your well let me know how have you been creative and if you haven't been creative how are you going to be creative tomorrow to make yourself feel like, well, alive. Ultimately, I've, I've labelled this periscope, you know, staying alive creatively. And I feel when we're not creative, we're just not alive, are we? I don't feel alive. I feel dead. Laid up with a cold, mate, says Patrick. Hey, Pat, I sympathise with you, mate. I, I had it over Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It was horrible. I'm trying to learn the guitar whilst I'm on the mend. Oh, yeah, Sam's got a broken shoulder. So maybe the guitar is going to be a bit, of a, uh, a bit of a struggle for you there, mate. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's stuff like that, picking up the guitar. Picking up a book if you're ill or whatever, uh, reading, you know, that's going to uh, help you stay in the game and just, you know, stay focused and it's going to fill that well. So I'm going to play this phone call for you now, guys. Um, it's about, it's a quite a long one. It's about 25 minutes. I'm not going to be able to speak to you whilst, obviously, this phone call is happening, but um, I can see your comments uh, Jess says, I met Julie a while back and she was lovely, like chatting to your favourite auntie. She's just incredible, Jeff, honestly, such a such a lovely woman. You're going to hear that right now. Um, like I say, she's going to be on the website very, very soon. It's been quite hard recently to track her down with the doing Broadchurch, and you'll hear her apologise about that, but I'm going to get her on for a you know full in-depth interview very, very soon. Um, so here it is. Give me your comments as it's playing out, guys. I can still see those, and I'll be back with you in about 25 minutes for a little debrief, all right? But this is how to stay alive creatively in this industry when, you know, it's fucking tough, isn't it? It's a difficult industry to be in. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, and here we go. See you in a sec. Hello? 
Julie, how are you doing? Uh, a little three star. Are you all right, Ross? Oh, you see, we can manage this. We can manage a phone call, oh, can't we? Exactly. I thought, you know what? This is beautiful. Phone calls we can do from the comfort of your own home. Everyone's I'm a winner. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I've been so elusive. It's very diff- been very, very difficult. I'm don't, so sorry. Don't worry. Don't apologise. No, you're like me. You just say, like, well, I, I'm getting better at saying no to things, but you just, like, I don't know how you fit in what you fit in, Julie. I see, I see <laughs> well, you on you'd Facebook and you're here. You're there, your charity dues, you're doing cameos yeah, no, there's, in this. There's a, there's a lot of sitting around watching telly goals on, it's, trust me. It's, uh, fine. it's fine. It's, uh, <laughs> it's incredible. Hey, well, listen, right, what I'm doing now, this is this is, this is is quite cool, is um, I'm recording this live now, so everyone who's listening, this is quarter past six. But when this is going to go out, Julie, it goes out just after nine o'clock. So when right. other people are hearing this, there's literally going to, well, I don't think anyone's going to join me for a start because millions of people are going to well, be watching say, you. Don't put it on at nine o'clock. No, That's what I need people to be... Uh... It's going out after that, but maybe about <laughs> half nine. I can't, I, can't, I can't change the slot, unfortunately. But millions of people are going to be like watching you as they're, well, the ones who have maybe got one eye on that and half an ear on this. That's pretty exciting, isn't it? How are you feeling? Uh, well, all right, I think. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's nerve wracking, and it? it's just like it's, it's uh, uh, these things. You do these jobs, and then it kind of wait months and months, and then it happens, and everyone's like, nah. um, and it suddenly becomes a big deal. But uh, but yeah, yeah, I think yeah, you know, I'm proud of it. I think they've done a good job on it, and and I think this first episode in particular is um, it, it's you know pretty good at, at trying to give an idea about what it's like for a woman who's been through something like that. You know, I'm, I'm really proud of all the research and background they did on it. So so I'm hoping that it'll go down well, yeah. Yeah, because for those who don't know, because you play a character, it's Trisha, isn't it? She's a rape victim. Yeah. Yes, yes. So it begins just after a, a serious sexual assault and uh, and that's the crime in this series. So, yeah. So it's a yeah, pretty, it's pretty like big that. deal and it's quite a, quite a distance from Hayley Cropper, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it is a small, yeah. Just, uh, me. <laughs> just a little bit, definitely, because, um, yeah, I keep seeing the trailers of it, and you only catch, like, a little a little glimpse of what's going on. You you see uh, Olivia Coleman saying, right, I'm Ellie, and, you know, you want to yeah. report a crime, and yeah. I'm thinking, I just want to see more. I want to see uh, Julie doing uh, doing a thing. But, yeah, yeah it's well, exciting. Like, well, the first, you've, you've kind of got to watch the first 15 minutes, really, because it's like it's quite full-on, you know, setting it up, actually. So I, I would say to people to try and watch that. Well, I'll make sure this. they'll be listening to this. So. <laughs> well, no, no, they won't. I'll make sure this doesn't even start until at least quarter past nine. So it's That'd fine. be great. <laughs> so it's fine. Um, awesome. Well, what I'm doing is I've started, yes, yeah, so I do like this this live. It's called the Periscope on a Monday night and a Wednesday night, Julian. That's basically it's an app that's owned by Twitter. Maybe you might want to get involved with this. It's pretty cool oh, at okay. some point. And you can do live video broadcasting through it. And I can put out like live pre-recorded video and pre-recorded audio and that kind of thing. So... For over the last few weeks, I've been like, right, you know what? To make these like interesting and just um, to add something different to them, I'm just getting my phone book out and just phoning people randomly in the industry and just going, look, I know <laughs> I'm annoying you, but let me just have a chat with you about something. You're and, brilliant. Like, You're brilliant. What a great idea. You've just got to just, you know, just do it, haven't you? And uh, I had Rob Collier on last week. We were talking... Uh, we were talking to him. I got into a bit of trouble because I didn't know I was on loudspeaker and I said a bad word in front of his son. Um, <laughs> so I'm keeping it clean this week. Um, but the the theme, Julie, is like I've had a lot of emails over the last few weeks, and you've been, I'm sure you've been here. I've been here at various points in my career where people are like, you know what? I'm just not seeing the progress that I think I should be seeing in my acting career. I've been going at it X amount of years or whatever. Yeah. Maybe it's time to just call it a day, sack it off. You know, am I good enough? Mm. You know, is it what I should be doing? All this kind of stuff. And I had a lovely chat with Rob last week because I guess he was in a similar position to you. He left Corrie, didn't work for a little bit. And then, you know, it took 18 months before it did it. anything did decent it. came along. Obviously, he got Downton, like he got six years in that and it changed his life. Um, but did he have did he have quite a period before was that oh look, that yeah right? well we were writing together so I went I spent like a year every single day around his house practically I might as well just lived there for a year and I heard his the phone calls to his agent and his agent would phone up I mean on a pretty much when he first left on a quite a daily basis and I'm sure you probably had this but it was all the wrong jobs it was like do you want to come and do celebrity scissor hands do you want to come and do this reality yeah, show yeah. that reality show this that and the other and Rob was always like mate I would just you know I see that as 
best selling out. I would rather go back to working on a building site than doing that. So he held out for such a long time um, and it paid off. But there was loads of times within that, you know, that 15, 18 month period before he got any work where he was like, I've made a big mistake here. Um, maybe, you know, I, uh, I shouldn't have done that or am I good enough to carry it on? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, now he's working regularly. He's just on the level. He's going out and do something else uh, with ITV. Um, obviously, he did, you know, a cracking stint in Downton for six years. Um, so it kind of paid off for him. But I was just wondering, like, you know, what points in your career, pre Cory, post Cory, now, pre, post Broadchurch, whatever, um, it's nice to hear of people who are, you know, what were seemingly smashing the industry, but also going, well, you know what, those guys go through this as well. How, how has that kind of cropped up in your career and how have you dealt with it? Well, I think that, I'll tell you what, what for me, um, what happened was, is well, when, I, when I went to drama school in London, and that was in the days of like the full grants and everything, so I was really, really fortunate um, to be supported through that, you know, not just my fees being paid, but my maintenance as well, for so my rent being paid and stuff, which nice. enabled me to, to have that training, but when I left... Um, you know, like there is at all drama schools, a big emphasis on getting agents. And I didn't get an agent for three years after leaving Lambda. And uh, and I was very, very lucky that I had a teacher at Lambda who was incredibly um, inspiring. And he had set up, um, and I think I've talked to you about this before, Ross, he'd set up the first um, multiracial theatre yeah. in South Africa in the 70s when black and white um, actors and crew and couldn't work together. They weren't allowed to. It was illegal. It's incredible and, um, it, to think of that nowadays. Yeah, it's, <laughs> and it's unbelievable, isn't it? And, um, and they did it. They set this thing up and they were being raided by the police like weekly and they'd have brooms around the room wow. when they were rehearsing. So when the police raided, the black actors would grab a broom and pretend to be cleaning because they were allowed to do that. Um, and so this 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 man, Brian Asprey, was always very much about um, just keeping creative, making work, doing work that mattered, that had something to say about the world. And so he... He had no truck for any of us sort of sitting around going like, oh, my God, I haven't got an agent. What am I going to do? And he just said, right, well, let's set up a theatre company. And we were like, well, we don't know how to do that. We've no money. We're on the door, blah, blah. And he said, well, if I can set up a multiracial theatre in apartheid South Africa, then I think that, you know, <laughs> you can probably do it. <laughs> I think <laughs> With so. With your youthful 21-year-old energy. So we wrote to every famous person we could think of and, and got, thousands of pounds unbelievably it was like sort of um prehistoric crowdfunding and uh, we hand wrote letters <laughs> rather than just put something out amazing and we built a theater we and we worked there and i worked there for three years now i know again that i was living in you know easier times in that i could sign on and get housing benefit while i was doing that with very little hassle but but the point of it is really is that the i think sometimes you can get caught up in how the world sees you as a, as an actor or an artist rather than just keeping your head down and keeping creative and keeping you know keeping alive creatively and doing stuff yes and it it is hard when you're an actor because you do need to be with other people and you you know unless you're a writer as well you know it's it's, it's difficult to sort of um create work for yourself but in whatever way you can that that's the way that I got myself through those years of like, you know, not getting paid work was by supporting myself by, you know, through the door and doing bits of cleaning work and bar work. But being with a group of people who were like minded and putting stuff on. And, you know, you can do that. You know, there's there's, there's venues in Manchester that you can get for, for nothing or next to nothing. You can, there's, there's there's ways you can fund things. You can get together with mates. And, you know, we both know loads of people who, who are doing that. And, yeah. and what it's doing is it's creating this, like, fantastic vibe in Manchester that's, like, full of people, you know, performing and writing and trying things out. And, and it's what's making Manchester so vibrant and so... And so, and so many people wanting to set up new theatre companies and stuff here because there's a community here of people who are willing to support each other and really help each other out. So, so I would say that you know, I was I've been really really lucky because I was always a character actor, and it's very hard for young character actors in particular. I think you know there's only a limited amount of roles. I yeah. think it's hard for everyone, but. So I did Arts Threshold, as it were called, for, for those years and then, then got an agent and then had the very lean years of just getting tiny bits of telly every now and again. And But I did 
I did keep dreaming and I did keep creative. And it doesn't always mean by putting on plays or doing things. It just means, well, I call it, I call it filling the well. So just kind of reading stuff, reading books by artists that inspire you, going to an art gallery, spending a couple of hours in an art gallery, um, doing stuff that makes you happy and makes you feel like you're in the world in a way, you know, rather than sitting at home, just rocking in a corner, waiting for your agent to call and getting really angry and, and measuring yourself against other people and other people's success, you know, because if you can, if you can concentrate on yourself and what, what fulfills you and what, what sort of drives you, then I think that that, it's a lot of the battle. It's not all of the battle because we've all got to live and feed ourselves. And, you know, but, but I think, you know, as well, Ross, there's, there's a big difference between, you know, I know a lot of actors who aren't successful in terms of like, you know, doing big tellies or off to Hollywood or, or anything like that, but they've, they've got a drive about them and a passion. Yeah. And they, and they sort of inspire people to want to be around them and to make stuff with them. And and, and that's just in some people. And you've got to try and manufacture that in some way. If it, if it isn't, you know, if you, if you find it very hard to motivate yourself, surround yourself by people who who are like that, you know, and just just keep going. It's, it's really, really important to just be gentle with yourself and keep the faith and get the hell off social media you know the the temptation to sit and look at other people's yeah. lives oh, and God. It. i wrote an article <laughs> on this julie it's one of the most like viral articles i've written for acts on this and it was about people comparing their front stage to uh, well their their backstage to other people's front stage i was like it's very much like a theater production what's going on on stage is all polished and professional yeah. and everything's great and the audience think it's brilliant they don't see what's going on in the background oh, no. behind the stage where everything's falling apart costumes of don't work it is. and everybody Everybody has those thoughts. Do you know? It's like I, I can guarantee you that that when Maxine Peake finishes a job, she thinks, "Oh my God, I'm never going to work again." Do you know what I mean? Those yep. those feelings are not just for people who would, you know, <laughs> it, it's like people who we perceive as being extremely successful. I read a fantastic interview with um, uh, Imelda Staunton the other day, and she just says that she's. She just sees it as a ladder, and there's always going to be people above you on the ladder, and there's always going to be people be below you, and you just keep on the ladder and just keep doing what you're doing as best you can. But the, it's it's toxic to start thinking of yourself either allowing yourself the Schadenfreude of of uh, enjoying other people's failures, yes, which is yeah. a sure sign <laughs> that you you're hell bent on self destruction. Yeah. Or looking up the ladder and going, well, they've stolen my career. I mean, how many times have you heard that? You know, it's, you've just got to, you've just got to be true to yourself and try and just try and make stuff. You know, and it's not all about getting seen by Beverly Keogh. It's about, you know, going to to press nights, supporting fringe theatre, supporting you know Maps, which is a fantastic you know organisation. Yeah, look what like you guys are doing with Take Back, all that kind of stuff. Take Back, amazing. Is, take yeah. Back is like a, a is something that we've set up from absolutely nothing. Yeah, I remember the, um, the Facebook post you put out the first day when it was like, right, we want to, you know, what was what was the first Take Back? Because I remember. It was, um, well, it was it was um, it was when it was the, when the Tory Party conference came to Manchester, and we wanted to have like an artistic response to it. That was the first thing of it, and it right. was a, a big success. And we decided to to try and keep on doing it. And our and our thing for take back is that it's never been about. Um, Dear Jenny Radcliffe, I will be appearing at. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like you know, and we can and we can smell that a mile off. Yeah, it's it, if we've seen someone on a demo, you know, if we've seen someone like actively engaged on on social media about like social issues, then that that should kind of weigh into what we do because we're creating a community of people who who want to create art that is that has something to say about the world. That's our thing, you know. That's our stick. Your stick can be anything, you yeah. know. Um, it can be clowning. It can be you know musical theatre. I mean, look at Port Mel, you know, these yeah. two amazing lads just come up, built this beautiful so venue, successful. which is becoming such a success. You know, it's, it's just great. It is all about that. For me, it's like, you know, 
I, I complete, I'm so glad you said that before about filling the well up and that kind of thing. I, I tell people this all the time. And like, for when, when I became completely at peace with whether I'm working or not as an actor at any one time was when I was filling my well up with anything else that was creative. And, it, and it, yeah. I even class stuff like this, what we're doing right now. This is going yeah. out live to probably five, 600 people on Twitter, you know, tonight, and they're going to be watching it and hopefully, you know, being inspired to, you know, to, to be creative themselves. Or I might write an article or I'll, yeah. um, I'll do one of the video interviews that I do or I'll design some graphics. You know, it doesn't have to be that I'm in front of a camera all the time. No, you know, it's, it's no. like, just and like be I say, creative. It can be, it can be just like, if you like, you know, more of the people that I know used to write poetry when they were a bit younger and they haven't done it for years, just like... Get a pen, do read some and then be inspired to write some. Do a sketch, you know. Like it's it's very rare for somebody to be creative only in one area. You know, yep. you might you might have always wanted to learn guitar. Just go, go on YouTube, get get a guitar out and like play some tunes, learn a song. It, it is it does more to change your 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 opinion of yourself and the way that you see the world and the way you see your career. Than, than anything else, I think, to do those things, just to, to be active. And, and it is about connecting with other people who feel the same. You know, there are people in everybody's life who are just, you know, who will sap your energy, who are just like, oh, I just can't do it anymore. And, you know, and, and battery drainers, I call them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, completely. And it's, and it's, you know, it's not good to be around those people when you're feeling like you're going that route yourself. What you want to do is be around people, you know, go and see Constellations at Oak Mill, you know, when two people have like got that on, got the rights, booked the venue, put it on. It's brilliant, you know, and, and just it's that kind of thing and, and go and support them and then chat to them afterwards about how they did it. Simon Nail is setting up um, 53.2, you know, just coming up and finding that venue. I know, and what it. an incredible venue it is as well. I know. I know, and it's like, and JB Shorts, that just started with a couple of telly writers who were just frustrated at being stuck in, in telly land, just writing for whatever they were writing, going like, want to write some theatre, let's, let's create this thing. And JB Shorts, as we know, is like this Manchester institution now, Massive, you know, and, yeah, so and everyone's desperate to be in it, and, yeah. you know, because it's a way of being part of that community. And it's, um, you know, this, this town in particular, I think, is like, is built on that kind of, struggle and that kind of um enterprise really and enterprise great word yeah that's exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly I think it. that it's just in people and and you've uh you just got to, just got to take part in it and we've all done it we've all sat there and thought like i just can't be asked yeah. i just want to sit and like just like watch crap telly and scroll through facebook all night <laughs> and you know it's just worth getting out of your house you know and going Go and, go and see a magnificent film. Go and see Bloody Moonlight. You know, just go and, go and see some great art. Yeah. And it, it'll it'll do a lot for you. It's, uh, it's amazing. And, and I, I did something recently as well that was just titled, you know, Stop Asking for Effing Permission to Be Successful because there's so many people out there who feel they need, you know, oh, well, I can't be anything unless someone else writes it or I can't be, you know, something yeah. unless a casting director invites me in. Or It's like, well, actually, we live in such an incredible age, Julie, where we've never had the resources that we've got today, no matter how people want to build the, the, the you know, the, the world up right now in terms of their perception of it and how bad it is and how Donald Trump this and this is going on. Yeah, there are terrible things going on in the world, but also if you were yeah. born in this country, you yeah. know, at this time and you, you yeah. know, obviously we've got to be so grateful for that. So, you know, the, we I, do we, and, and the way that we can connect with everyone and everything, you know, so like social media for all it's, you know, terrible thing of like, you know, comparing your life to others. Yeah. It does mean that, you know, like when, you know, if, if there's days when I'm, you know, if I'm feeling something, you can just Google it and you can find like great actors talking about their experiences of, of anything that you're feeling at any given time. You know, it's that all amazing stuff about Brian Cranston, you know, changing yeah. his life by just having a different attitude to auditions about seeing it as an opportunity to act. I mean, how many actors have been inspired by that, you know, by him saying that and having a whole new sort of take on going to auditions? Yeah. And it's, um, those things are at our fingertips now. You don't have to yeah. look very far at all. We're and so fortunate and, like, you know, people need to also, I think just being grateful for everything you have got and focusing on what, what you have yeah. as opposed to what you haven't is, is, is key for me as well. I think so. But also, but also, you know, fighting for those who don't, you know, that, yeah. I really believe in that as well, Absolutely. you know, sort of, of kind of just like, you know, being being a champion for people with less than you, a you force know, for and, good, and yeah. 
and connecting and just always, you know, what are the, the things that we need to do to stay mentally healthy just as human beings, not as artists, are the same. You know, we've got to look after ourselves. We've got to be active. We've got to connect with other people. We've got to put something back. Yeah. And we've got to learn stuff. You know, we've got to just kind of and learn to be in the moment rather than always being like harking into the past or looking into the future. Just, you know, try and be present now and do something that makes you happy and fulfilled. That's amazing. We just, I do a book club on a Wednesday night and we just did a book, Julie, called The Present by an awesome guy called Spencer Johnson. It was all about effectively uh, giving you, uh, giving yourself permission to give yourself the present. It's a gift that we all can give ourselves, yet so yeah. few people want to because they are stuck in the past. They are, yeah. you know, um, really fearful of the future and then they go through life, you know, thinking they're going to live forever. They die and then they realise they never actually lived because... Yeah. They, yeah. you know, they were holding themselves prisoner, well, I guess. Well, it's so true. And, you know, you always think, gosh, no, no one ever got to the end of their life and went like, oh, I wish I'd spent more time on Facebook. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Definitely. <laughs> wish, I, wish I'd watch more, like, really shit telly and, like, scroll through Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I wish I'd have made myself feel feel worse a bit longer by looking at, at more unobtainable beauty on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> definitely amazing. Well, th listen, thanks. I just like I just thought it'd be it's, it's always super inspiring talking to you. And I just you know I know everyone listening to this is gonna have uh, have taken some uh, some inspiration from that and some some motivation. So to those people who emailed me, mm -hmm. there was about three or four people this week. Julie, what would you say if you could give them like a couple oh, of sentences? It's the same with me. It's funny because I've had a couple of friends like say to me this week as well. It must be it must be a particular time. I think you know February is an odd month, and yeah. you know it's dark and it's wet and everything. I'd say my, my main piece of advice, I think, you know, and. And I hate talk, talking in platitudes and I hate being trite when people, you know, are, are, are really struggling, you know. But but I would say just, just get out of the house. Get out of the house and go and see something beautiful, whether that's like a, your favourite painting at Manchester Art Gallery or, you know, a, a cheap matinee of, of a beautiful film or just out in nature. But just get out of your own head and just try and sort of... And maybe do something that you've been meaning to do for a while, like pick up that old guitar or, you know, write a couple of haiku, you know, even if it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But no, you never know. You never know what, this is the beautiful thing as well as actors, we never know what tomorrow brings. I mean, look at our mate Annie Wallace, bless her. How many years did she wait for that break oh in Hollyoaks? Oh my God. 60? Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. It was a long, long time and a very, very difficult time. And she, and she didn't give up and it paid off. Yeah. It's, yeah. uh, it's incredible. I'm so team Wallace. When I was at drama school with Annie, she was a year above me, and that's when he, that's when I when you know when I first um, saw you. you used to come and obviously see Annie because of the work you did together on Corrie. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and yeah, I was like, there's always something about her. Whereas, like, you know what? I just know something's going to happen for you. I don't know when, but like, I, but it I was, will happen. I just and sometimes knew... you just got to play the long game, haven't you? And, yeah. and just. And bless her, you know, even though, you know, she was constantly bloody whinging on Facebook. Oh, God, it was terrible, wasn't it? <laughs> she was always, like, she was making albums, she was make, doing yeah. radio plays herself and recording them, you know, she was... She was she was keeping it going. She kept filling that well. Tell yeah, you. she'd whinge a bit, but she was always even if she wasn't, she was always be involved. Even yeah, if that's what I try would. and do. Even if it's not in front of it, the scenes, you know, it's behind the scenes. Yeah. You're always Absolutely. feeling a part of it, and that's that's half the battle, I think. Yeah. Um, so uh, absolutely, absolutely awesome. Well, I'll let you go and get yourself settled in then. Um, <laughs> are, are, you get, are you getting all the family around the telly tonight? How is Kirsten, everybody? All all right. Yeah, everyone's fine. Yeah, everyone's good. Yeah, no, me and Kish are going to watch it. Um, me, my eldest daughter hasn't watched the first two seasons because she was a bit young then, so right. she's going to catch up on them before she watches it. Ah, but, okay. Um, but uh, to be honest with you, she said earlier on that uh, she said if there were zombies in it, I, I might be a bit more keen. You know, she's right. quite into a Walking Dead at the moment, <laughs> and the ah. little one's just too young. So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I think it'll just be me and Kish and, uh, and uh, a bag of crisps. So, amazing yeah. well uh enjoy it and um and yeah and, and we'll get some time fingers crossed and and yes, coming we'll for a um, and do the proper thing yeah a real brilliant. uh they're great right, you get Rotten, pampered well done. you get um you know we'll get your makeup get your hair done you know it's all all proper <laughs> pro set up now it's not like like it was last time interview you just me and a oh no it's actually it was relatively professional last time because we used the studio didn't we normally it's um for the for the audio uh you count the voiceover gallery that, that was years ago such a long time ago it is a long time ago it was that little room above yeah the 
Yeah, yeah, it was, it, was uh, it was like a bit of a makeshift studio at my voiceover oh, yeah, agents. Oh, yeah, me, fine. I was but, uh, bit, well, we've gone up a market now, and we can even provide you with drinks and all sorts. Oh, my goodness. So, <laughs> <laughs> just uh, put, put your rider in, and we'll, uh, we'll sort that out. All right, then. All right. Well, Fantastic. Look to it. I'll see you later. I'll well done for this. See it's you all right. Later, Thank lovely. you. Thank you so much. I'll speak to you soon. All right. Lovely. Cheers, Julie. Bye. 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 Thank you so much for listening to this, folks. If you enjoyed this, please share it with your friends. Subscribe to the Act On This TV audio experience on iTunes or Stitcher by searching for Act On This TV, all one word, and come and get involved with the Act On This community for real at both www.actonthis.tv and also inside our private Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Act On This TV. Leave me a review if you've got time. I would love you for that. And I'll be back very, very soon. Appreciate you all so much. And there you go, guys. Good, isn't it, eh? What do you think of that? She's um, she's awesome, Julie. Love her. Proper, uh, Fanny was saying good old Northern Soul. Yeah, she is. She's just literally, like, so down to earth. I mean, she's starring right now as we speak in probably the biggest drama we have in the UK right now, Broadchurch, doesn't get much bigger than that. And then she's still got time for me two hours before it goes live to just get on the phone and have a chat. She's awesome, absolutely awesome um, and super inspiring. I hope it has inspired you guys to like, you know, go, well, you know, am I filling my well like I need to be doing? If I'm feeling down, is it because I am sitting at home, rocking in the corner, waiting for my agent to ring or just waiting to get an agent or whatever it is, waiting for permission to do stuff because like we said on you know many other periscopes stop waiting for permission just go out do it i had a meeting with an actor today it's quite funny actually big shout out to lee petcher um i had a meeting with him and um he came to the meeting to go right i want to buy a macbook because i was like mate you need to get yourself a mac and then we can start i can start helping you podcast and all this kind of stuff and uh, he came to the meeting going i've got 300 quid by the end of it i'd made him spend 1200 <laughs> but i don't feel bad about it because the guy is like He's going to be set now. He's going to be set. But it's taking that step, that initial leap in going, right, I'm going to commit. I'm going to commit. And by making him spend money that I'm not I'm not into getting people into debt or anything like that, but by committing to something so much, I've done it myself in the past, um, did he have to spend that? He didn't, but he, if he wanted to get, if he wanted to basically get the things done that he told me he wanted to get done, he needed a better machine than the one that he said he could, you know, he was going to get. And for me, I've been in this situation a few times where I've been like, right, okay, maybe that's a little bit more than I wanted to spend. But let me have a look at other things in my life. What am I spending bullshit money on that I can save? Is that a TV subscription to Virgin or Sky that I never watch? I'm paying for 500 channels and I watch two of them. Pointless. Let's get rid of that. Am I spending too much money on coffee when I go out? Am I spending too much money on alcohol? This, that, and the other. And a lot of people don't want to give up those luxuries um, because they don't want it. The thing they're saying they want so much, they don't fucking want it enough because they're like, oh no, I can't because, well, what, you know, I can't afford that. Well, what are you wasting money on? You're going out, spending 30 quid a round with your mates in bars on the weekend. It annoys me when I see people like that. Got Lee set up with this legend. He's going to be sorted now, but I've been in this situation myself sometimes. When I was buying the cameras for acts on this TV for the multi-camera interviews, I had two choices. I either bought, two generation old cameras that would just about do the job for 750 quid or I spent 3,000 pounds on three brand new versions of the cameras that would do a much better job would have longer you know a longer lifespan and ultimately do a you know do a better job I ummed and ahed until I thought why are you being such a dick by not spending the three grand what I might as well be doing there is walking into the bet the betting shop and betting against myself putting money down on the table and going I bet I can't make £3,000 back by investing in this incredible equipment. I was like, well, this is stupid. If I invest in great equipment and make the best product that's available in the industry, people are going to watch it and people are going to want to pay for it because it's great value. Um, so that's what I did. You know, stop. People need to stop betting against themselves. You've got to start betting with yourself. You know, go in the bookies, be your biggest fan and go, right, I'm going to put a thousand pound on on by the end of the year. I'm going to have such and such a thing. Don't actually do that <laughs> unless you're really convinced. But metaphorically speaking, you've got to start betting on yourself and quit fucking betting against yourself. It happens so often. So by getting Lee to step out of his comfort zone, commit and invest in something that's a little bit out of his comfort zone, he's going to use that. Had he spent 200 quid on a MacBook 
it's quite easy to go, well, I could easily afford to just not use it. Toss it to the side. There you go. Pointless. What? Why did you even buy it? Um, so sometimes life can be like that and it doesn't have to be money. You might be investing time into something. You might be investing your physicality into something. Anything like that. Emotions into something. You know, people are, oh, well, I won't, I won't invest fully because I might get hurt. Fuck that. You can have a shit relationship. Invest fully. You know, oh, well, I, I, only, I think I can only afford to put a quarter of my heart into this relationship. Well, you know, hold the three quarters back and then you're going to have a shit relationship. Whereas if you just go, I'm going to put 100% all I can afford into that relationship, I promise you it's going to be better. And if your heart gets battered and bruised and broken, you know what? That's so much better than living a life where your heart is caged and you never get to experience love and, you know, the fulfillment and everything that can, that can come with that. I'm a big believer in that. Go all in or just don't bother at all in everything, like in everything. So are you going all in in your acting career? Are you going to bed every night with the tank empty? Can you look yourself in the mirror and go, you know what? Today I gave it my all. Tomorrow I'm going to get up and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to fill my well however I can and I'm going to spend that and dispense that water that I'm filling my well with, you know, in creative ways. Um, I always go all in, I think. Funny, I think you do. You commit, you very much commit to stuff, definitely. Um, so that's, uh, that's good, but that's what it's all about, you know, and it's just about, like I say, the title of this Periscope, staying alive creatively. We feel fulfilled as actors and human beings, just as human beings in general, when we are making progress in any area. And one way to make progress is to stay consistently creative in whatever area that is. It doesn't have to be, you know, just in front of a camera or on a stage, you know, write, sing, dance develop a website i don't know give something back make something of value to other people you know just something that's creative you'll feel so much better about yourself if you're currently in a bit of a slump so i hope that's been useful and um, you will have noticed on the slide when that was playing something called the act on this tv audio experience it's basically um a podcast that i put out on itunes it used to just be a weekly podcast now i put out three or four pieces of audio a week i put all the audio out of these periscopes so if you're listening to this audio on on itunes hello you can't see me right now but you can hear me massively appreciate you being here um i put out those random phone calls that i just make to people if i bump into somebody i might just get them on a quick facebook live video or a quick periscope and then i'll rip the audio from that and put it on itunes so it's one way to be able to download all that as well before you go out the house so you're not using up your data to consume videos and stuff when you are out i love walking along with a podcast on in my ear so that's why I was like, you know what, I'm going to start putting more and more audio out. So go to iTunes, search for Act On This TV, all one word, and you'll, it'll pop up straight away. Uh, if you've not got iTunes, go to stitcher.com, S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R.com, stitcher.com. Again, search for Act On This TV, not .tv, just Act On This TV, uh, and you'll find the Act On This TV audio experience on there as well. You can have that on your Android device or, you know, or any other tablet or anything you have that isn't an Apple device. Tony Rossi, good evening. Well, good afternoon to you. Tony's in Chicago. Um, you missed the call, Tony, but rewind, my friend, after this. And, uh, and listen, with great actress over here in the UK called Julie Hesmanhalsh. She was like a national treasure for 15 years, 16 years, when she played a super popular character in a soap called Coronation Street you've probably heard of. She played Hayley Cropper. She then left that soap a few years back, and she's gone on to work on some incredible stuff. And tonight, she stars in the biggest show we have in the UK right now called Broadchurch on ITV, a big channel we have over here. Um, so she's, uh, she's just great, and she had a lot of uh, you know wisdom to dispense. I thought I'd get her on the blower and... Uh, share it with you guys don't know who i'm going to phone for next week do you like this is this interesting you know in terms of we this is only the second time i've done this i just thought it'd be cool to use the phone i guess normally we do a little presentation or something but if you like this i'll just keep ringing people up and getting people's takes on stuff doing little mini interviews um that we can put out on periscope um i've got a phone book full of people so who knows who could be on next week i don't know somebody um, I think it's useful, says Patrick. Um, if you've got any suggestions um, for any other topics you want to cover or you want me to ask people about, I said we covered a bit about staying creative tonight. We covered giving up last week with Rob. Really like it, but can we have it interspersed with your presentation? Um, don't know. Um, I don't know if that's with the software I use for this, Fanny, if it's actually possible to start playing something and then pick it back up from where it left off without it starting again just in the way this gets broadcast oh i mean from week to week oh i thought you meant as in like 
talking about it as we go along. Yeah, absolutely. So we can do some uh, one week of call, one week of presentation. Yeah, definitely. We could do uh, we could do that. Um, we can mix it up a bit. Um, I'm sure my phone would run out eventually anyway. <laughs> so I think if we space it out a little bit, we'll probably last it last a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, I enjoy it. it. Just you know, it's something a bit different, isn't it? And um, you know, it's kind of like sometimes you just need to hear from these people who we perceive as smashing it and go, you know what? They have just the same fears that we have, just the same insecurities that we have. And, um, you know, we're all kind of in this together. Um, so I hope that's been useful for you. Make sure you do watch Broadchurch because th those who are still on air, we've missed most of it now. Get it on Catch Up or ITV Plus. Is, do they have an ITV Plus one? I don't know. I think they might do. So at 10 o'clock, you can watch it 10 till 11. Um, partic say pay particular attention to the first 15 minutes. Like Julie says, it's uh, integral to the whole series. Um, but I have TiVo'd it and I'm going to go and watch it right now actually before i uh, go to bed i want to watch the whole of this series lewis arnold mate of mine and a guy who did the a, a podcast with me on act on this tv directs episode six of broadchurch um so uh go and listen to his podcast all about that on act on this tv and look out for his episode episode six um awesome guy like that guy is flying he's going to be a, an incredible director like he already is but i think he's going to He'll go on to direct like Marvel, DC style massive cinema releases, I reckon. So uh, yeah, keep an eye on uh, an eye on him. Great guy. Maybe I'll get him on the phone in a couple of weeks or something like that. Um, but thank you. I'll be back on Wednesday. I don't know what book we're doing now for the book club for March. I have no idea, but I will know by Wednesday. If you've got any suggestions, um, put it in the Facebook group. Come and join us. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash act on this TV. It's the most supportive acting community on Facebook. Uh, we just, we breached the 4,000 member mark today, guys. I think we're about 4,010 members. So massive round of applause for us. Um, well, for you guys, you know, it's, uh, it's all down to you. Thanks for being here, uh, which is amazing. Um, and let's grow it. Let's keep growing it. Let's try and hit 10,000 by the end of the year. 10,000 quality people. Um, Amy Linden to help me with it says uh, Sam Amy Linden yeah so I keep um, I think we mentioned it last time didn't we yeah so Amy's definitely on, on the radar The Life Changing Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson is Tony's new favourite so not giving a fuck I'm, a kind, I'm a kind of a big believer in that you've got I, can't, I think you've got to have it at the same time almost like for me I really don't give a but at the same time I kind of do I, uh, it's a difficult one. In terms of I don't care, I want everybody to think that I'm putting good work out effectively. I want to please people in terms of I want people to think I'm a good guy and a force for good and I'm genuine. But So I care about that. But equally at the same time, if someone doesn't think that, that's where I don't give a... Because I know I am that thing. You know, I am as genuine as, as you could possibly get and, and a force for good and have integrity. So I kind of really care and want people to to know that. But equally, if they don't buy that or they don't believe that or whatever, that's at that point where I like, I just don't care. Um, haters, haters are like oxygen. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes you're gonna get them. You can't please everybody, guys, but uh, but they'll they will make you a better person. That's strong self worth and knowing thyself is funny. Yeah, it is. It's ultimately knowing what you bring to the table. Um, and when you're fine, you know, being. I guess, like, you know, just you. And, like, I mean, that's just own, owning everything, isn't it? You know, you're just, like, you're fully accountable for everything you do. And you're like, yeah, I take full responsibility for me and everything I'm doing. You own every situation. You're just all right with yourself. It's powerful. Um, so, yeah, just own it. Be happy with yourself. Ultimately, it'll change your life. Uh, right, so we're back on Wednesday. I'll have a look at that book, Tony. I'll have a look at Amy's book as well, uh, Sam. Thank you for being here. Massively appreciate you. Um, oh, I've just seen that slide. Check this out. I'll put that up for you again. Remember that? We had this la last week. That's something that I'll remind you of again about giving up. Look at him just walking away just at the last minute. Could have one more strike, hit them diamonds. Um, Fanny said, do we still do the meetup? So in Manchester, the meetup is happening. The Act on This Manchester meetup is happening on the first Saturday of March, which is this coming Saturday at Home Theatre um, in Manchester. Beautiful venue. And that's happening at 11 a.m. And Jen, Jen's on here tonight. Um, Jen, what is the when's the next London meetup? Jen Hannah is amazing and does all the London meetups for me. 
Um, so when when's the next one, Jen? Are they the last Saturday of them every month? So with that has that just been? Have I missed that? I think I might have missed that. I might be the twenty fifth. London was Saturday just gone. So yeah, so Fanny, the London ones are the last Saturday of the month. The Manchester ones are the first Saturday of the month. If you check the events tab in the Facebook group, you'll be able to see when the next ones are if they've been created yet. If they're not there, it just means they haven't been created yet, but they will still go ahead. And massively appreciate you, Jen, for continuing those. I know it's difficult setting up the meetups. When I was first starting it in Manchester, some weeks there'd be three of us that were there. Now we get, you know, maybe 20, 20 plus um, people. So if, um, if, you, you know, if there's not that many people uh, attending, keep going keep going got to keep the traction and be consistent um i attend every manchester meetup fanny yeah absolutely do every single one jen is in charge of flying the flag down in london um but yeah i will at some point make a bit of a um a cameo in the london ones i've got to i want to come down and see you guys so i will definitely do that this year at some point maybe multiple times uh which would be good but yeah if people are listening to this if you listen to this on itunes um, you know, or anywhere, just come and come and get involved with those in-person meetups. They're great. Um, thanks, Ross. And uh, oh, who was that? I missed who it was, but said that they watched the Denzel Washington speech that I posted on Twitter. Great speech, isn't it? Ease. He talks about ease being the, uh, you know, the greatest. Wow, what? How does he say it? It's like the greatest, like adversity almost to progress. And if it's easy, he basically says, look, you know, it stops you from progressing. When things are hard and you've got to push through is um that's that's the stuff that makes you progress so if you are going through something difficult at the moment guys i promise you when you get out of it and you look back and you connect the dots because you can't connect them looking forward you can only connect them looking back you will see how uh how whatever you're struggling with has served you in a positive light later down the line i promise you what doesn't kill you makes you stronger as they say right i'm gonna go i'm gonna go and watch Broadchurch. um but thank you massive shout out to julie again for uh, taking time with us tonight um, and I'll catch up with you guys on Periscope Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Be there or be somewhere rubbish. It's the only place to be on a Wednesday night, all right? If you're not there, then just missing out. <laughs> all right, take care, guys. I'll catch up with you soon. Bye for now.